So I'm going to get out all of my work. It is definitely super interesting to see all of my work spread out. There's pieces that need some help, like get some varnish on them. Varnishing is cool because once you lay down that varnish, everything looks super rich and it looks like the painting was just freshly painted with all those nice saturated colors. In isolating varnish, which I would use this first. So like I said, I'm gonna just see how this goes to a turpentine, time my kids drop it in the way. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm excited to try, to try these out. Are you excited too? You want to see how mom's paintings look? With some varnish on them. This is now my new favorite varnish. Hands down, it's awesome and the garage sale slash art show is tomorrow. So gotta get it all done today. So here we go. <laughs> I'm Jennifer Marie Keller. Welcome to my Diary of an Artist. My neighborhood does this big garage sale thing. And so instead of having a garage sale, I was thinking of turning my garage into like an open studio or kind of like a pop-up gallery. And I'm gonna start planning for that. So I'm gonna get out all of my work, all of my available pieces, put them all out on my studio floor so I can see everything and see what I've got to show. It is definitely super interesting to see all of my work spread out. I was gonna put everything out. You can see this is my pile of finished pieces as well, but a little off topic or kind of like different categories, I would say. Here I've got plain air work, mostly top two rows, plain air. This was a studio. I guess this is all a la prima stuff, mostly plain air. The bottom, these are studio pieces. And then I've got my charcoal drawings here. And then my nice wall <laughs> of paintings. And then with the paintings up here, I've got some stuff from my atelier, my art school, and then other stuff I've done out of there. Um, and then down here, is this new direction that I've been going, which I'm more like liking like these two and this painting a lot for my new, new direction. And just seeing everything together, it's so obvious how much brighter and more colorful I'm pushing than what I'd done before, which I'm really, really liking. It's so cool to see everything laid out like this. <laughs> So as I'm looking at all of these pieces and seeing, thinking about how I'm going to present these in, uh, in my little pop-up gallery slash open studio in my garage, definitely there's pieces that need some help, like get some varnish on them. So all of these pieces can get varnished and then just the ones that are right here need to be varnished which I'm actually super excited about this varnishing because I just bought and it just came in the mail, this new varnish by Natural Pigments. 
I've never been super happy with the process that I've had in the past with varnishing, but I've done a lot of research and well, I'm going to test it out. And if this varnish goes well, I'll make a separate video on it with the things that I learned about it, but I'm super excited. Varnishing is cool because once you lay down that varnish, everything looks super rich and it looks like the painting was just freshly painted with all those nice saturated colors. Seeing all my work laid out this way is just so cool. And I find it so helpful to see past work all together. Um, one reason I think it definitely helps my self-esteem with this self-doubt that I've talked about before that I'm really trying to get over this year. But I can tend to really put my self-worth into the pace that I'm making right now, which is not good or healthy, don't recommend it. But spreading my, my work out and seeing it all reminds me, <laughs> my kids over here, <laughs> reminds me where I've been, where I'm going. And I just find it super, super helpful to see the progress that I've made in past pieces because I can get really caught up in just the piece that I'm making right now. And, and then the other thing is being able to compare your work to past work, which is another thing that's good for getting rid of self-doubt is comparing yourself to yourself and not to other. And it's interesting because a lot of these past works that I remember that I've done, seeing them next to other ones, there's elements that have surprised me that I, I like, that I didn't like before in other pieces and kind of different stuff like that. So it's just so cool to see everything beside each other. Like for example, the paper that I've used for this, I usually don't like to... <laughs> I usually don't like to work on super dark pieces of paper. Not that any of these are super dark, but this one in particular, I d didn't prefer working on this paper. Or I didn't think I would like the outcome of it, but comparing it to all the other pieces, there is something about working on this tone of paper that the face just pops so well. I like the intensity of the eyes with it and it just has, I feel like this is making me think of if I do things on darker paper like that compared to these lighter ones, then I can start making interesting backgrounds with white chalk in the background. Also seeing these, my favorites are these two paintings. And in my plein air and all the Primo work, I want to push color more and just have a ton of fun with color. Because I think these are really fun. to. They're going to look awesome when they get some varnish on it because everything will look way more saturated but yeah definitely want to be going in the direction of these two paintings when i'm working in this kind of category of work and the same goes for these paintings that that take longer that i do over a course of weeks i love the colorful ones and the brighter ones i mean which makes sense that's the most recent that's why i'm doing them because i'm more in the mood to be doing that but there's also elements to my darker paintings that I like with the skin skin tones and kind of taking more time in subtleties. And so if I can blend that subtleties in these like, <laughs> in these brighter, more colorful paintings, especially something like, like this, if I can get a lot of subtlety in the subject, but then have that really fun brush strokey background oh i think that'll be magic and that's like a really cool direction that i want to di dive into more so i'm gonna stay here for a while just study my work and reflect on it <laughs> write down what i'm coming up with and what i'm liking comparing and contrasting everything and then i'm gonna get set up for this fun pop-up gallery in my garage. I ordered some new varnish from Natural Pigments, so I'm gonna test that out now. Ha ha ha. I've been so excited to open this, but I've been waiting till I got all my work out and seen what I needed to varnish in the first place. Now I get to see it. I love it. It's so exciting when art supplies come to my door. Especially so I'm editing the video and I realized that some of the footage went into slow-mo. <sighs> so I am speeding it up 
which is fixing it, but it's still a little weird. So yeah, the next few clips are slow-mo sped up to normal speed, a little odd. Well, there's been many times where I haven't been going to the art store as much. Okay, these, so it's two different varnishes. And this is, I don't remember if I said this from natural pigments. And I've, I've used a bunch of different varnishes before, but it's always one varnish that I put over the, the painting. This is, we have an isolating varnish, which I would use this first. And then when that dries, I put a finishing varnish over it. So like I said, I'm going to just see how this goes. And then if I like how these varnishes work, I'll do a whole video about them, but I'm just, I'm just testing it today. Oh, and I also got a varnishing brush as well, because all of my varnishing brushes are let me know if you have this problem, um, but they always get gum. I can never get all the varnish out of the furrow and it just gets stuck right here. That like gumminess. So then the bristles don't move as easily. And I've only used soap and water before because I try and not use turpentine because I hate using turpentine or minerals, any kind of paint thinner, but I'm going to do it this time because I don't want to just keep buying new brushes. So varnishing brush, varnishes. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> so I'm looking at these and look how nicely that moves in there. The varnishes I've used before are Damar varnish and at least the ones I've used. Well, I've used ones before where they're manufactured, they're made ready to go. And then other ones where you melt the crystals, the DeMar crystals in turpentine, and you make your own varnish from it. But they've all been thick. And I've done different things like heat the varnish so it'll get thinner, or you can thin it out too with, turp <laughs> with turpentine. My kids dropped it in the doorway. <laughs> um, but this is, I feel like this looks already Perfect. So yeah, I'm excited to try to try these out. Are you excited too? You want to see how mom's paintings look with some varnish on them? I can already smell the varnish just through the jars. They're glass jars and everything, but ugh, I do not like smelly materials like varnish, turpentine, all that stuff. Ugh. But I need to wait before I do this so Eric can, yeah, when Eric comes home so he can watch Jude. I know, because you're not allowed to be around the varnish. And then, yeah, life of a parent, a parent painter working around, working around the baby schedule. I'm preparing my paintings to be varnished and making sure there's not dust and stuff on them. This one's particularly bad with a lot of, uh, dust and like little fuzzies and stuff on it. Oh wait, yeah, you can see it there. <sighs> what are your methods for getting, this is so annoying when that happens. I don't have that problem anymore because I let my paintings dry in a closet. But before this one, I had it out the whole time and so everything just got stuck to it. I've used a stiff bristle brush where, where I go over the top to try and lift off the hairs and dirt, but what I found that's been working is making a tape ball and rolling this over it. You think that's silly? You think, which is working surprisingly well. Is this, is this what people do? Jude thinks it's ridiculous. Please let me know your tips and tricks for this because, <laughs> man, that's annoying when you get little hairs all stuck in your nice painting. But the tape trick seems to be working nice.
this is now my new favorite varnish. Hands down, it's awesome. So this is the first piece that I varnished and it just has such a nice even coat on it. It was so easy. <laughs> so this is the one on panel and this is the one on canvas. Same thing. So it is glossy as you can see, but I love it. They both look awesome. I contacted the company because I just used the isolating varnish and I think it looks great. Um, I asked if they recommend doing the other one, the finishing varnish. And they said, if I were to use this, wait two days, but if I like how it looks with just the other one, there's no need to, to do this one. So I'm gonna skip that step for those, those two paintings that I just varnished. These are my other paintings that are ready to be varnished. So I have them all set up and prepared. All dust, hair, dirt, anything has been removed off of them. So they are ready to get varnished. I got this beautiful bowl from my uncle-in-law that lives in Texas and it's a handmade, hand-painted bowl that I think is really nice. So I've now made this my varnishing bowl. Nice to have like each step of the process be fun and beautiful. Varnishing went great. There were a few paintings where the varnish didn't go on evenly, where it kept sinking into places, which is why they had that option for the two-step varnish. So for those, I'm gonna wait. I contacted, contacted the company and they said two or three days wait after doing the isolating varnish and then you can do the finishing varnish. So for those paintings, it's gonna get a coat of this. So far, super pleased. It's been the smoothest varnishing process I've ever done. I really love this new stuff. These paintings have dried now for a couple, a few days, and they look so good varnished. I love how the varnish makes the painting look so it just looks like you painted it yesterday, like it's still wet and the paint strokes are all juicy. And yeah, I love it. Varnishing is like magic. I'm also going through and checking the evenness of the varnish, see if there's any parts that look uneven, meaning that some parts will stay glossy and other parts will stay, or become glossy, I mean, and other parts will stay matte. And if that's the case on any of these, then I'm gonna do that second step process with the varnish. So that second bottle. Also with having these dry, I'm keeping them face down like this. So any dust or debris or anything wouldn't get stuck to the surface as the varnish is drying. It's funny though, looking at these, cause there, this was one example where I thought I would have to, it looked uneven in some spots when I put the varnish on and I thought I'd have to use that second step. But these are all looking pretty good. Like they evened out while drying or something. That one's good. I love how this painting looks. It looks so vibrant now, now that, now that it has that varnish on it. And then, you know, besides just having everything look really, the paint look very fresh on it, it also protects the painting as well. Yeah, all of these are excellent. I didn't expect that. I thought I'd have to use that second step, but these all look really good. Also, my varnishing brush is in still perfect condition, it seems like. So that method of using turpentine, 
and then washing it with soap and water is perfect. Nothing's left in the frill. And yeah, it's great. I can keep using this again and again and again and again and again and again and again. <laughs> Spent yesterday getting the garage ready, cleaned up, and now starting to hang all the pieces. So here where I keep all of my tools on this pegboard, I covered it up with cloth so I didn't have to take all the tools off. And I've got my a la prima and plain air work up here. And this is going to be my studio painting wall right here. And I think what I'm gonna do is hang up my drawings, tape them up to this wall right here. I've also got some note cards that I got from the store using Sharpie to make name tags for everything. And the garage sale slash art show is tomorrow. So gotta get it all done today. everything hung up really liking how it's looking everything's all labeled and ready to go I'm gonna be putting this stuff up on my website that's not already up there soon the only thing that's not technically finished is this painting which needs to be varnished you can kind of see compared to it just isn't as vibrant yet it's got some sunken in areas to it but I'll be varnishing it soon. It's ready to be varnished, just haven't gotten there yet. Today is grad sale slash art show day, and I'm really excited because I love it when people can see my pieces in person, especially my paintings, because you can never, or at least for the work that I do, since I like to do layers of paint, and with taking photographs and people seeing them online or whatever, it never looks as good as seeing it in person for the painting. So I love it when people can view it in person. Now the charcoal drawings, it's you can get pretty close with seeing them online because, well, it's charcoal and then paint is transparent and the way the light passes through it, especially with layers. So I am excited. So here we go. <laughs> So bright. <laughs> 